Starting with head and neck cases, this, uh, these are images of a 9-year-old girl presenting with headaches and uh, on the lateral radiograph of the skull you can see that there is a solitary lytic lesion with lobulated margins and uh, well-defined borders involving the parietal bone uh, just posterior to the coronal suture. The cone down view shows that uh, there is a beveled edge appearance uh, without sclerotic margins. So, this lytic skull lesion in a child is a very typical picture of Langerhans cell histiocytosis, especially considering the beveled edge appearance of the skull here of this lesion as well. So, this is the case of Langerhans cell histiocytosis. However, because it is a lytic lesion, lytic skull lesion in a child, so you can consider epidermoid cyst and malignancy in the differentials as well. These are these are images of a 42-year-old man presenting with generalized aches and pain on the lateral skull radiograph. You can see that there are multiple circumscribed calvarial uh, lucencies of varying sizes uh, without sclerotic margins. And uh, many of these lesions have a typical punched out appearance. Now these lytic skull lesions in an adult patient so the top differential, uh, the, you, what you can you can you're going to consider in the differentials is, uh, of course, considering this typical uh, punched out appearance of these lesions, multiple myeloma, uh, case of multiple myeloma, is uh, the basic uh, diagnosis here. Uh, that is, uh, it is giving the typical that uh, uh, punched out lesions appearance of multiple myeloma. However, malignancy or um, Paget's disease, fibrous dysplasia, they also should be included in the differentials along with the surgical defect or metabolic disease like hyperparathyroidism uh, which gives a typical salt and pepper appearance. Uh, they should also be put in the differentials, hyperparathyroidism, Paget's disease, fibrous dysplasia, epidermoid cyst, surgical defect, uh, they should also be included. However, this is a case of uh, malignancy or mets or multiple myeloma or lymphoma uh, they should all of these should be uh, the top differential here that is mets or malignancy secondary to multiple myeloma this is a six-year-old girl who is uh, presenting with a soft bump on the head and this is the uh, coronal reformatted post contrast ct scan which shows a circumscribed avidly enhancing a midline scalp mass with the tubular components. This is the sagittal view of the same lesion and uh, this is the sagittal view of the same lesion in the bone window and it shows that the calvarium is intact and there is absence of uh, intracranial communication or extension of this lesion. So, considering this typical uh, picture of enhancing scalp lesion in a child, the diagnosis is of hemangioma. So, this is a case of hemangioma, however, sinus pericranii and venal lymphatic malformations and Langerhans cell histiocytosis or any malignancy should also be considered in the differentials. However, this is a case of, uh, this is a case of scalp venous malformation. And hemangioma and sinus pericranii and all of these should be uh, considered venal lymphatic malformations, Langerhans cell histiocytosis. They should always always be considered in the differentials. These are images of a newborn with a superficial hematoma after prolonged labor with vacuum assisted delivery. So on the axial CT scan, there is a hyperdense uh, hematoma overlying the left parietal bone and uh, this hematoma is well demarcated and confined by the sutures. On the follow-up frontal radiograph several years later, it shows the, the residual skull deformity uh, deep to the outer periosteum of the calvarium. So this is the case of a superficial hematoma in a neonate and uh, the diagnosis here is of Keffel hematoma. Keffel hematoma is the diagnosis along with you can put subgalial hematoma or caput succedaneum in the differentials. These are images of a two-year-old boy who is presenting with chronic illness and large head size. So on the axial uh, T2 MRI you can see that there is symmetric enlargement of the parietal and uh, frontal bones uh, with decreased marrow signal intensity throughout. 
on the sagittal T1 weighted MRI as well, you can see that there is symmetric enlargement of the uh, frontal and uh, uh, symmetric enlargement of the parietal and frontal bones with decreased marrow signal intensity uh, throughout. So, considering this key finding of uh, diffuse calvarial thickening in a child, uh, the diagnosis of chronic anemia should be made along with the, you can put a, a normal variant in the differentials list, chronic anemias, hemoglobinopathies, bony dysplasias like fibrous dysplasia and uh, ferritoin therapy and uh, hyperparathyroidism or chronic shunted hydrocephalus, they all should be put in the differentials. However, this is a diagnosed case of chronic anemia and uh, chronic anemia or hemoglobinopathies, they typically result in enlargement of the diploic space and decreased marrow signal. This is a heart palpable uh, scalp abnormality. The patient presented with a heart palpable scalp abnormality and as you can see that this is the coronal CT reformatted image and it shows focal smooth calvarial thickening with the central lucency involving the left parietal bone. So the key imaging finding here is of focal calvarial thickening and uh, the diagnosis is calcified cephal hematoma or calcified cephal hematoma However, fibrous dysplasia, uh, malignancy, any metastatic disease process uh, involving the cal calvarium and Paget's disease and meningioma, uh, uh, they all should be considered in the differentials. However, this is a case of calcified cephal hematoma. So, this is a child who has presented with the facial abnormalities. And as you can see that on the lateral skull radiograph, uh, there is intrasutural, intrasutural ossification that is Wormian bones uh, involving the squamosal and uh, lambdoid sutures. So the key finding here is of Wormian bones and uh, the diagnosis is cleidocranial dysostosis. However, uh, the differentials list includes the idiopathic Wormian bones which are basically irregular ossicles uh, located within the sutures of the calvarium. So most of the time they could be idiopathic as well and osteogenesis imperfecta or Down syndrome or any metabolic disease process like Rickets or hypothyroidism. So they all can result in the formation of Wormian bones. However, uh, here in this case, the diagnosis is cladiocranial dysostosis. So these are Wormian bones secondary to cladiocranial dysostosis. This is a case of a 53-year-old man who has presented with visual disturbances. As you can see on the contrast-enhanced sagittal T1-weighted MRI midline image through the brain, uh, there is a large expansile enhancing a soft tissue mass which is centered over the clivus. Also, there is intracranial extension uh, with involvement of the cellar or supracellar region. Uh, the pituitary gland was not identified separate from the mass. So the key finding here is of clival mass and uh, this is uh, a case of invasive pituitary macroadenoma. That is invasive pituitary macroadenoma. However, in the differentials, you can put metastasis uh, involving the skull base, uh, chordoma, chondrosarcoma, uh, plasma cytoma or meningioma. They all can be included in the differentials. However, this is a case of invasive pituitary macroadenoma. So this is a 46-year-old woman presenting with the dysphagia and tinnitus. These are the contrast uh, enhanced axial CT images. Uh, one is the soft tissue and the other one is the bone window. And they show an enhancing soft tissue mass uh, with the expansion and irregular erosion of the jugular foramen. The corresponding T2 weighted MRI shows the presence of multiple flow voids multiple flow voids within an intermediate to hyper intense left jugular foramen mass. The coronal T1 post contrast MRI sequence with fat suppression shows the extent of the avidly enhancing mass uh, which is centered within the jugular foramen and it is extending intracranially into the internal auditory canal and inferiorly into the upper cervical region. So the key finding here is of jugular foramen mass with this typical imaging picture and uh, of uh, this is a case of paraganglioma or glomus jugulare. So, uh, so the diagnosis here is of uh, jugular uh, glomus jugulare or paraganglioma tumor 
because it is giving the typical salt and pepper appearance of uh, paraganglioma. However, in the differentials, you can put schwannoma, meningioma, metastasis, and uh, jugular bulb variants. This is case of a 10-year-old boy with hypochondroplasia and neurological deficits. So this is sagittal t 2 weighted MRI sequence and it shows the upward migration of the dens uh, through the foramen magnum with the associated severe compression of the cervical medullary junction and uh, upper cervical cord. So the key finding here is of the extension of the dens through the foramen magnum uh, with compression of the craniocervical junction. So this is a case of basilar invagination or basilar impression which basically results in the upward migration of the dens uh, through the foramen magnum. However, in the differentials you can put uh, basilar impression as well. So this is a diagnosed case of basilar invagination. It is a primary or a congenital abnormality, uh, basilar invagination. However, the basilar impression is acquired abnormality. This is the image of a five-year-old boy who has uh, a bony dysplasia and a history of headaches and uh, neurological deficits. So this is the sagittal uh, reformatted CT scan which shows the flattening of the skull base with the clivus nearly parallel to the foramen magnum and uh, post-operative changes are also noted here at the craniocervical junction posteriorly. So the key finding here is the abnormal flattening of the skull base and uh, the diagnosis here is platybasia which refers to flattening of the skull base and the causes are very similar to basilar invagination or impression. So this is an 82 year old woman who has presented with chronic headaches. So this is the axial CT scan of an 82 year, year old woman in bone window and it shows the symmetric calvarial thickening involving the inner tables of the frontal bones. So the key finding here is of the uh, symmetric calvarial thickening involving the inner tables of the frontal bones and considering the age of the patient as well. So the diagnosis here is of uh, hyperostosis uh, frontalis interna which is basically the calvarial thickening due to bone growth along the inner table. And it is far more common in women and in adult women. And uh, this is the only diagnosis here, that is hyperostosis frontalis interna. It is an asymptomatic incidental finding and it requires no further workup or any further imaging. These are images of a 10 year old girl who has presented with soft spots. So this is the axial uh, CT scan and uh, 3D reformatted image with a posterior view and uh, you can see that there are repaired circumscribed ossification defects of the parietal bones which are separated by a midline region of ossification. Here in this image as well you can see that there are paired circumscribed ossification defects of the parietal bones separated by a uh, midline region of ossification. So uh, the key finding here is of circumscribed symmetric parietal calvarial defects and uh, the diagnosis is of parietal foramina. So parietal foramina is uh, basically uh, hereditary ossification defects uh, involving the parietal bones and uh, they can they are mostly isolated abnormalities however they can be associated with syndromes as well and um, on clinical examination you will al always uh, note soft spots uh, in the parietal foramina region so this is a case of uh, parietal foramina that uh, are oss ossification defects hereditary and they ca can occur in isolation or they can be associated with syndromes these are images of a six months old girl presenting with head injury and uh, the axial CT scan in bone window shows a concave a deformity of the frontal bone on the right side. There was no intracranial injury. The three-dimensional uh, volume reformatted CT scan shows uh, better depicts the deformity which is adjacent to the metopic suture which uh, mimics a dented ping pong ball. So the uh, key finding here is of concave skull deformity in an infant 
and uh, this is a ping pong fracture so this is a case of ping pong fracture and ping pong fractures are basically uh, they are uh, specific depressed skull fractures in infants uh, that result in a concave deformity which is uh, similar to a dented ping pong ball so the treatment options depend upon the severity of the deformity and the presence or absence of any associated injuries so this is a case of ping pong fracture so these are three newborns and uh, infants with the uh, head deformities uh, the, that is uh, a b and c images two of them are of patient a c is patient b and this is uh, patient c so as you can see that uh, on the axial and uh, three-dimensional 3d reformatted uh, CG scan uh, images in a four months old boy reveals cephalocephaly and premature closure of the sagittal suture. The frontal radiograph, uh, the frontal reformatted CT scan in this uh, five day old girl in the image C shows the premature closure of the coronal sutures with brachycephaly, a prominent forehead and mid-face hypoplasia on uh, in patient C uh, you can see that on the coronal CT scan this is a four months old boy and it shows the uplifting of the uh, right orbit with a harlequin eye from unilateral coronal suture uh, craniosynostosis so uh, these are cases of premature closure of sutures with head deformities that is craniosynostosis which refers to premature closure of the sutures resulting in head deformities uh, with or without associated facial abnormalities. So these are images of a 16 year old boy uh, presenting post motor vehicle crash and uh, the axial CT scan in bone window shows a fracture through the sphenoid or the central skull base with extension into the right carotid canal and left uh, orbital apex. The superficial soft tissue swelling uh, overlying the right temporal bone is partially seen here. The CT angiography image shows the occlusion of the petrous segment of the right internal carotid artery. Additional findings include uh, subtle pneumocephalus within the right uh, middle cranial fossa as well as the orbital emphysema on the left side near the orbital apex. So uh, this is a case of central skull base fracture uh, with vascular injury that is with carotid occlusion. These are images of a 28 year old man involved in a motor vehicle accident. So the coronal reformatted uh, CT images show a vertically oriented lucency or medial avulsion fracture of the occipital condyle on the right with minimal displacement of the fracture fragment. So the key finding here is of vertically oriented lucency, lucency through the occipital condyle and the diagnosis is of occipit, occipital condyle fracture. So the type 1 occipital condyle fracture refers to a comminuted uh, impaction fracture with no or minimal displacement of the fractures uh, fracture fragments however a type 2 occipital condyle fracture consists of a basilar skull base fracture that extends into one or both the occipital condyles so this is a case of uh, type 1 occipital condyle fracture so a six months old girl with irritability and normal head uh, ct scan so this is the lateral radiograph of the skull which shows a linear lucency traversing the parietal bone in the anterior posterior plane and uh, the, this uh, linear appearance of the skull lucency is a very typical uh, imaging picture of linear skull fracture so this is the case of linear skull fracture so these are uh, images of a young adult man uh, with facial asymmetry so on the axial and coronal uh, T1 post contrast MR images with fat suppression you can see that there are abnormal uh, asymmetric there's abnormal asymmetric enhancement and enlargement uh, of the tympanic segment of the right facial nerve 
and uh, the coronal image shows the normal non enhancing labyrinthine segments bilaterally uh, medially above the cochlea and the normal size and enhancement of the tympanic segment of the left facial nerve so the fee key finding here is of the facial nerve enhancement and uh, the diagnosis is of facial nerve schwannoma however uh, this in the differentials you can add normal facial nerve enhancement bell's palsy nerve sheath tumor like schwannomas uh, facial nerve hemangioma perineural spread of tumor uh, and ramsey hunt syndrome however this is a case of facial nerve schwannoma Bell's palsy most often involves the distal intracanalicular and labyrinthine segments and it is uh, usually self-limiting. So these are the images of a young boy with chronic ear pain and conductive hearing loss. As you can see that on the axial image from a non-contrast uh, CT scan, there is a lobulated soft tissue density within the left middle ear and uh, also there is sclerosis and opacification uh, within the left uh, mastoid ear cells. Uh, suggestive of chronic inflammation on this coronal reformatted ct scan image through the temporal bone there is a mass within the epitempinum and uh, lateral attic that is prusac space uh, with blunting of the scutum and uh, erosion or demineralization of the ossicles so the key finding here is of a middle ear mass and uh, the diagnosis is acquired cholestatoma so the acquired cholecystoma uh, acquired cholecystoma they originate in the prusac space and they cause blunting of the scutum and ossicles erosion however in the differentials you can add a normal variant vasculature like apparent internal carotid artery cholesterol granuloma and uh, glomus tympanicum however this is a diagnosed case of acquired cholecystoma these are images of a 37 year old man presenting with headaches and vision loss so on the axial ct scan in uh, bone windows in the bone window there is an expansile uh, lucent lesion within the right petrous apex and uh, this lesion is hyper intense on the unenhanced uh, t1 weighted mri and on the t2 weighted fat suppressed MRI sequence you can also see that this lesion is hyper intense as well and on the flare sequence uh, as well it is hyper intense however uh, this lesion uh, did not enhance on the post contrast sequence which is not shown here only the T1, T2 and flare sequences are shown and it this lesion is hyper intense on all of these sequences that is on T1, T2 and flare sequence. So here the key finding is of, of a petrous apex mass which is hyper intense on T1, T2 and flare sequences. So the diagnosis here is of cholesterol granuloma. However in the differentials you can add mucus retention cyst or mucosyl, congenital cholestatoma, apical petrositis and uh, neoplasm like metastasis uh, of the skull base. So these are the images of a 14 year old boy with uh, abnormality on physical examination. On the axial CT scan, uh, there is focal calcification and uh, narrowing of the left external auditory canal. And uh, on the coronal reformatted CT image of the left temporal bone, there is a dense cal there is a calcification at the junction of the cartilaginous and uh, the bony external auditory canal. Uh, pedunculated morphology was seen on the sequential images uh, so considering this key finding of circumscribed external auditory canal calcification or uh, ossification the diagnosis here is of external auditory canal exostosis uh, which is also called surfer's ear and uh, this is basically uh, these bony lesions are often bilateral circumferential and sessile so the, uh, this is a case of external auditory canal uh, osteoma however this is a diagnosed case of external auditory canal osteoma and in the differentials you can put the external auditory canal exostosis these are images of a 32 year old man presenting with sensory neural hearing loss as you can see on the high resolution axial fast imaging implying uh, steady state acquisition that is fiesta image 
there is a cystic mass in the right uh, cerebellopontine angle with soft tissue signal uh, within the right internal auditory canal. The post contrast axial T1 weighted MRI, fat suppressed MRI here shows the avid enhancement of the uh, solid component within the internal auditory canal and extending through the porous acousticus. So the key finding here is of a cerebellopontine angle mass and uh, the diagnosis is vestibular schwannoma. Uh, however, in the differentials you can add arachnoid cyst, meningioma, epidermoid cyst and lipoma.